Welcome back to the Torchy Blame series, and as promised, we are continuing our discussion of us versus them, or you're not invited, and we're going to talk about preemption. Let's start with the top of the heap when it comes to preemption. And we're talking about governments. And in the United States Constitution, under Article 6, this is what's called the Supremacy Clause. It is the law of the land. In this clause, and it will be the second paragraph, the Supremacy Law sets forth various ways that the Florida statutes can displace or preempt state law. The Constitution allows for state legislatures to govern as they see fit within their borders so long as they don't violate federal law. States argue that preemptions of cities and counties are necessary to prevent a confusing patchwork of legislation that would make it hard for individuals and businesses to conform to the law. However, cities and counties enjoy what's called home rule. And a good summary is the right to local self-government, including the powers to regulate for the protection of the public health, safety, morals, and welfare, to license, to tax, and to incur debt. Home rule involves the authority of a local government to prevent state government intervention with its operations. The extent of its power, however, is subject to limitations prescribed by state constitutions and statutes. Now keep in mind, we're talking about pre preemptions. <clears throat> however, on the other hand, there is the Dillon Rule. The Dillon Rule is the cornerstone of American municipal law. Under Dillon's rule, a municipal government has authority to act only when the power is granted in the express words of the statute, private act, or charter creating the municipal corporation. The power is necessarily or fairly implied in or incident to the powers expressly granted, or the power is one that is neither expressly granted nor fairly implied from the express grants of power, but is otherwise implied as essential to the declared objects and purposes of the corporation. The Dillon Rule is used in interpreting state law when there is a question of whether or not a local government has a certain power. We've discussed many times on the Torchy Blame series how candidates, even electeds, attempt what, we, what is referred to as visioning. What is sometimes referred to as local policy experimentation is also identified as visioning. Visioning is also considered policy innovation. On a national level, certainly over the past two years, we've seen the word mandate, but how does the supremacy clause affect mandate or vice versa. But it doesn't matter how brilliant you think you are and how wonderful you think your visioning is. The truth is America is a nation of laws, not a nation of men. Local policy experimentation and policy innovation, in other words, visioning, are considered social and environmental, in other words, ideology tactics. And I can tell you in the last two of our four years in office, Rhonda DeFranco and I both saw, especially in the Florida League of Cities, a massive change and it was, I see it now, and the change had, had gone from the rule of law and studying the rule of law and learning how to implement the rule of law to climate change, plastic bags, things like that. And so 
because of the ideology that has now been impressed in local offices, mainly cities, the state governments, the state legislatures, have seen fit to use preemption in an ever-increasing way. We can certainly see the result of local policy experimentation and policy innovation, in other words, visioning. We can see the result of that, especially in the city of Northport, which we always use as our sample here on the Torchy Blame series. We see that because a pool was built, which was, the, which was adverse to the vote of the people, which resulted in massive overspending and other particulars that were the result of an election starting in November 2016 and some of the activities before. We've gone over this, these activities previously, but now we've seen how politicized the city of Northport has become. And we've seen the result, which is an entire segment of the city will be leaving or contracting out. And with them, they will take more time-honored spending, which they find more desirable in the county. In the meantime, the people just approve sec a second time single member districts, which will also remove some of the politicization, or the hope is to remove some of the politicization in the county commission races. So you can see this is a very important time here in Sarasota County, not in the city of Northport. We expect for the same individuals, the same type of individuals to be elected at least for one or two more election cycles until we can get rid of those original haters, the McDowells and the Joe Lukes. And there are some others that we can assume are going to be trying to climb the ladder up, the ladder of hate. And but we do see in Sarasota County that they have that the voters are very much wanting to normalize the county. They want to get rid of the scrum, the dictates of the developers. And at some point, we may see that return in the city of Northport. I don't see it happening anytime within the next one or two election cycles. But the whole point of this particular segment of the Torchy Blame series is to point out we've been talking about how the electeds in Northport have taken away after the people have voted, after they have made their decisions, they, the politicians or the scammers haven't even preempted the voters. They've actually just literally stolen the votes after the votes were made. And they've given this, this money to their friends. So now we are moving forward with this conversation. We've seen the city of Northport has been very much politicized towards a progressive city. We've seen, we are now seeing the people of West Villages reject progressivism. We are seeing the people of Sarasota County, the voters have rejected the, the scrum, the type of politicized and monetary, monetarizing of certain candidates for their certain decisions. So this is an exciting time in the county of Sarasota. We can't say the same for the city of Northport, not at this time. So I hope that this has been more of an interesting segment for you. And I tried to touch on some more national issues in order to bring home what we have seen in the past, what, six, six years in the city of Northport. It's a very sad time for the city, but we will also continue to keep you very much aware of what's going on in the city. Thank you for joining us.